Hey guys, what's up? We're going to be doing a different type of video today. And this is for the Battle Pass light cons. Which ones are the best? Which ones are the worst? Which one should you go for? Now, of course, this involves your money. So we want to make sure we get the right one. We don't want to get one that we don't need or one that we pick just because we like the artwork. No, this is now, this is when preference goes out the window. And this is all based on what you have in your game currently and what you can do. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. We're going to go straight into the list, straight to the top. Nihility, uh, no, uh, Abundance. We start off with Abundance. Abundance is one is increase the wearer's max HP by 16%. And when using basic attacks or skills, restore all allies HP by an amount equal to 2.0% of their respective max HP. Now remember, because these are part of the battle pass, we know we'll be able to super in position five of these. So we will be looking at super in position. Super in position for this is increase your max HP at a flat rate of 32%. And it's going to heal for 4.0%. So that's going to go up by 1% this healing on your max HP every in position. So by 4% of your max HP, and your max HP is going to go up by 32%. The HP on stat on it itself is 1,058. That's pretty good. And it's going to increase that 1,058 by 32% on top of whatever your healing is. Now, if you're running the Tasha, well, there's only two healers in the game right now. The Tasha and Bailu. Now, I don't have Bailu. I have the Tasha. I run the Tasha. Now, based on her own light con. This increases her energy regeneration rate by 8% and the outgoing healing when she uses her ult by 12%. Already, I would say it's better than her own one. If you have her own light cone and you got it in the pool, it's already better than this one. And the reason being, I'm in the wrong uh, section. You can super in position five it. Again, because you can super in position, yes, they're not free to play, but because you can guarantee pay to play, superimpose these light cones, it already has more value than if you have one of these other four star light cones at in position one. And because you're paying for this light cone, we are gonna compare it to the one that you can get guaranteed Super Impulse 5 for free from Echoes of War and the light cone store in game, which is Quid Pro Quo. And at the start of the wearer's turn, regenerate 16 energy for a randomly chosen ally, excluding the wearer, whose current energy is lower than 50%. That's already got value at the beginning with eight energy. But 16, that's pretty good, it's got good value. But you see the HP here, only goes up by 952. Whereas with this one, on top of its skill, the HP goes up by 1058 at level 80, which is like insane to me. I would say this is actually really, really good. This guarantees consistent healing, like consistent. And it specifically says when using a basic attack or skill, right? So you could literally do damage. Like if you, if you don't want to waste a skill point and just need to do a little bit of healing on a character, you can just do Natasha's basic attack or Bailu's basic attack. Bailu specifically, I know it's to build up her stack things. And you're gonna heal everyone for four point percent of your HP. So if you've got like 3000 HP, you're still gonna heal a lot. I'm not no math whiz, but I'm pretty guaranteed 4% of 3000 HP healing on everyone. That's gonna be a lot, right? Especially with that 32% on top, if, if you shit even goes higher than that. Like, yeah, this is, I would say, this is a pretty good free light comp. So I would say on a tier list already off the gate, I would say S. I put that in S, man. You can heal without wasting a skill point. Like that, and all you're gonna build on your healers is HP. So it's like, it, it's a win-win. I don't care what anyone says. This is a win-win light con right here. Now we're gonna move on to the next one. The next one, since we're going down the list of what's on the battle pass is Nihility. We will meet again. Now remember, you can in position five these. So we're comparing these to in position fives. After the wearer uses basic attack or skill, deals additional damage equal to 48% of the wearer's attack to a random enemy that has been attacked. That's pretty good, especially if you have an ability character that doesn't AoE. Well, I don't have one. <laughs> At least Pingler doesn't do an AoE skill. But that's still pretty good, right? If you in position five that, 96% of your attack. Now I've mentioned before in a past video that, for example, a character like Pingler is not a bad damage dealer at all so this is not a bad light cone at all but again we're going to compare it to the free to play one that we can get super in position five guaranteed and that is for Mata. oh my god oh best girl and what this does is increases the break effect dealt by the wearer by 16 percent and increases the damage to enemies afflicted with shock or wind shear by 16 percent this also applies to dot now the problem with this is this is selective for example pila is an ice type character she causes freeze she does ice damage the only way for her to get the secondary bonus of this is if I run it with Serval, which applies shock, or Sampo, which applies wind shear on a regular basis. So this is better for like Sampo, but if we're talking about in general Nihility characters, the break effect is still pretty good in my opinion, 
but the value you get from this at five that is really good that is really good but i don't know i think uh it depends on your nitty character and how you've built them whether this would be useful or not because it all depends on how much attack you have but 96 percent that is that is pretty good that's pretty good so i don't know where i'm going to place this i think what we will do for now i would place this because of that 96 percent i would place it in the a tier at the moment now we're going to be looking next at the preservation this is me now this one gives flat rate 16 percent of defense which is pretty good increases the damage of the wearer when they use their ultimate by 60 percent of the wearer's defense now for the protagonist this is really good because the ultimate already increases their damage output based on their max defense this just helps it even more right in position 5 120 percent my problem with this is this this effect can only apply one time per enemy target now i wish this was more specific because I don't know if this means, if anyone knows, like if this has been tested by anyone who's already at 30, could you let me know? Does this mean for that turn? Or does it mean one time for the whole battle? If this is one time for the whole battle, this is useless. I'm sorry. I don't, I, this is, I would not pull for this. If this, if that's what that means for the whole fight, I guess if you're going through mobs, yes, 100%. But for bosses, where you're gonna be in that battle for a while, and this only applies one time the whole match, it's useless, it's absolutely useless. So. Do let me know if anyone's tested with it. I might look into it a bit myself, maybe off uh, video. But right now, from what I'm seeing, this isn't specified on exactly what this means. If this, I just wish it said per turn or per battle, because then it would make more sense to me. But because this sentence alone, and this isn't the first time Hoyoverse has done this. If you're a Genshin player, you know, they're not good at explaining things sometimes. And I wish this was explained better, because when I read this, if I take the literal meaning of this, it is, that's it. That's only going to apply one time per enemy for the whole battle. That's it. They're only going to take that extra 120% damage one time. Now, the free 32% defense, flat defense, is pretty good. I'm not going to cap. That's good for tanks. But for a skill I can only use once per battle, potentially once per battle because of shit wording, no, nah, it's a waste of my time. So you know what? We actually are going to rank this quite low because if we compare it to the free one here, we can in position five this for free. Never forget that. We can in position, the ones we're comparing them to is the ones that we can in position five for free by the Echoes of War battles and the Light Cone store from the Forgotten Hall or Memory, whatever it's called. If we in position five this. At the start of the battle, the damage dealt to all allies decreases by 16% for five turns. That's quite a long time. And at the same time, immediately restores HP to all allies equal to 50% of the respective HP difference between the character's max HP and the current HP, which that's pretty good. But I will say compared to the first skill, which can give you a flat rate of 32% eventually, right? This isn't right away, but eventually, because we know we can superimpose five of these, we could get in the battle pass. This flat rate 32% puts it over this, I would say. But the only problem I have is the last part of the secondary skill. If this was explained a bit better, I'll put this higher on the tier list. I'm going to go ahead and put that in C because that secondary skill, the last effect is not explained well. Now, if it gets explained well, then yeah, gladly will put that up to B, 100%, or probably even A, I ain't gonna lie. If that's like not just a battle and per turn, I'll put that up to A tier or even S tier. But right now, because that secondary skill was not explained very well, that will sit in the C tier. Now for the Hunt Light Comb, I'm gonna go over this one a little bit briefly, because if you've seen my last video on Sela, then you know we've already been through this, but I put it in the C tier in the last video, Strictly because we were talking about free to play options. If we're not talking about free to play options and we are paying to get our light cones from the battle pass, this is a fucking good ass light cone, in my opinion. Increases your crit rate by 24%, and after a critical hit, there's a 32% chance, a fixed chance, to dispel one buff on the target enemy. That's not bad. That's not bad if you're not running a character that can debuff on an enemy and the enemy has a problematic debuff. It's a nice little added bonus. So I would say this one's pretty good, especially compared to the free to play one. Man, I'm not gonna do oh I don't like this light cone because of that last part. I really don't. <laughs> Again, we went through this in the last video. You can superimposition five this one though. Which is the only thing that makes it somewhat useful. But I would say this beats it out 100 percent Crit rate to me is more desirable than speed or attack. You you can easily get speed or attack on your relics and your ornaments. Crit rate and try to balance crit rate and crit damage on characters in Hoyoverse games is a bitch. So yeah, I would say this increases its value already because of that flat crit rate of 24%. And then there's a chance to dispel a debuff, which is just a nice low added bonus. So I would rate this 
outside of the hunt. Now we're in this one, specifically with the other battle pass light cones, I would rate it a tier. Next, we're gonna move on to Harmony. We're gonna start off with the free to play one that we can max in position because the skill is shorter to read. When the wearer uses their skill, then the next ally take an action, except the wearer deals 16% increased damage for one turn. That's pretty good because in position five, a flat 32% damage for your big DPS character, which is pretty good. That's quite nice. Now we compare it to the battle pass one. This one, in my opinion, this is basically the Witsith. If you're a Genshin player, this is basically your Witsith, but I think this is better than the Witsith. Now watch this. At the start of the battle, whenever the wearer's turn begins, one of the following effects is applied randomly. All allies get either attack increase by 10%, crit damage increase by 12%, or energy regeneration rate increases by 6%. The applied effect cannot be identical to the last effect applied and will replace the previous effect. The applied effect will be removed when the wearer has been knocked down, aka dead, right? Effects of the similar type cannot be stacked. The cool thing about this, right, that cannot be stacked things a bit wary, but look at that in R5, right? Or in position five, whatever. 20% attack, 24% crit damage, and 12% regeneration rate. And unlike the Witsif, where it was random every time, you know you know that the effect you get is always gonna be a different one, one of the other two. So let's say you get attack, you know guaranteed the next turn you're gonna get either crit damage or regeneration rate. Let's say you get regeneration rate. Oh, awesome. Now I'm about to have my O up for my DPS. And when this character's turn comes back, uh, like as I say, for example, you're running this on Asta, she's gonna get a lot of turns because of her speed up. Now you know you're gonna get attack or crit damage next time. It's, it's really freaking good. I would honestly say, even though they're random, all three of the buffs are wins to me. They're all dubs, they're all dub buffs. Why sit there and settle for a 32% attack bonus, right? That's cool, that's nice for one turn, for one character. When I can impose this five over the course of time on the battle pass and get 20% guaranteed every, potentially every other turn. And for everyone, not just one character, right? So I would say this is a lot of value. I'm going to put this in the S tier, 100%, 100%. I might pull, I might go for this one myself. I ain't even gonna lie, because I use Asta, so that's my Harmony character. But I think these two are definitely the best ones we've seen so far. Next, we're going to be looking at Destruction. Now, the free one we can get for Destruction is Wolf Walk Time. Increase the wearer's attack by 10%, increases their damage to enemies afflicted with burn or bleed by 60%. This also applies to Dot. Uh, in position five, because we can get it in position five for free. Increases the wearer's attack by 20%, and the dot, extra damage on dot and bleed people, uh, burn and bleed people, enemies, whatever, it's 32%, right? That's cool, that's that's actually not bad. Only problem with this, again, just like with, uh, I believe it was the Nihility one. Yes, just like with the Nihility one, on the secondary effect, it is selective. There's the only problem with this, it is selective. The first one's cool, flat rate of 20%, that's not bad. The secondary effect is selective. You use that either on the protagonist or use that on hook so far. No one else would use that. No one else would, this is useless for in terms of like a general destruction character. Whereas one of the battle pass increases your attack by 24% off rip. Let's keep that in mind. This needs to be off five to increase that by 20%. Off rip, this is by 24%. In position one, at five, it's 48%. It's already better just because of that 24. In the secondary skill, whenever the wearer defeats an enemy, they restore HP equal to 12% of their attack. That's pretty good because nine times out of 10, destruction characters will take a lot of damage or use their own health. For example, Arlen will use their own health or Hook or the protagonists when they're in destruction form, they take a lot of damage. You're gonna use them as a tank. They're quite tanky characters. I don't know much about Clara. I don't know much about her kit. But destruction characters tend to be quite tanky characters and can dish out a lot of damage. So this for me is a win, win, freaking light cone. Yes, especially if you don't have any other good options. I would say this is a win, win right here compared to this one, 100%. Again, this is only if you're willing to pay for the battle pass though. Like that's why we're comparing it to the free to play ones because if you're not too willing, this is completely fine. I don't think this is bad, but because the secondary skill is selective, this just has so much more value in my opinion. So we're gonna place that S. I'm gonna place the S. Again, this is strictly between all these other light cones. This is between like what's better. I'd say these three out of all these so far would be the best to pull in my opinion. Now we're gonna move on to the final path. The final path we're gonna be covering is Erudition. Now for me, <laughs> as you can see from right here, I don't need this, right? Because I have this, but let's pretend I didn't have this, right? Let's let's pretend I didn't have her, okay? Today is another peaceful day. 
After entering the battle, increases the wearer's damage based on their max energy. Damage increases by 0.20% per point of energy, up to 160 energy. And in position 5, that's 0.40%. Now, I would say, for AoE characters or AoE DPSs, you're going to want energy on them anyway, right? You're going to naturally, one of your pieces, one of your ornament pieces, or your substats, you're going to put a lot of energy. I know I have a lot of energy on Servile. Not that much, it could be better, but whatever, right? Because I want her ult uptime as much as possible. You want your AoE DPSs ults uptimes as much as possible so this actually isn't that bad at all because it's going to increase your damage like let's say you prioritize energy in your stats for your relics you get rewarded for it 0.40 percent right not 40 point 40 and up to a maximum of 160 energy so that's the thing as well you know how much you're going to be getting the bonus on right so you know what not to cap over it as well it literally tells you what not to cap over so i think that's pretty good I don't think that's too bad, right? Now we're going to compare it to the free-to-play option, which is the seriousness of breakfast. Oh man, I love Bum Bum. Increases the wearer's damage by 12% for every defeated enemy. The wearer's attack increases by 4%, second up to three times, right? That can then change to 8%, second up to three times, and the flat bonus will be 24%. Now that's not bad, right? Flat 24% for AoE DPS, that's not bad at all. For every defeated enemy, during mobs, your AoE DPS is going to be taking them out quickly. So that's 816, that's 24. So that's a 48 damage bonus overall at Super Imposition 5, which is a free to play uh, obtainable thing for this Light Kong. You can get a 48% flat damage bonus for every enemy defeated, if you can defeat three enemies, obviously, with your AoE DPS. That's not bad, especially during boss battles. A lot of boss battles like to summon ads, right? So this actually, I don't think this is a bad light cone. Oh, I think this is a pretty solid light cone. I would say both of these are quite solid. But com so comparing it to the value of the other light cones in the past, I would put this in the B tier. And because it's not terrible, because it allows you to prioritize your energy a little bit on your AOE DPSs. But compared to the value of the others above it, I would put it in B tier. And with that, this is the tier list of the battle pass light cone. I think you should be pulling for these three. I think you should be prioritizing these three. Now, obviously it can depend on your options. Like I said, this to me isn't as useful because I have Himikos, right? But if I didn't have Himikos, this would probably, I'd put it in A tier because it'd have more value for me, right? But again, I'm also comparing it to all these. This, man, we need to clarify the fucking skill in this because right now, I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it. It's staying down there. I don't care for it. I ain't pulling for it. Unless someone knows different and can clarify that skill, please let me know. But in the meantime, I would say abundance, harmony, and destruction are the best three to pull for. If you think differently, let me know down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.